Hello again. Today it's time for us to take a small break from the algebra so that we can work on the topic of tolerance. Tolerance is that little plus or minus amount that's allowed in a dimension or on a weight or on a volume or on a time period because no measured quantity is ever perfect. So grab your guided student notes and let's begin. The symbol here with the plus sign right above a minus sign is read, well, exactly the way you'd think it would be read. It's read as plus or minus. And it means exactly what you think it means. It's a way to combine two problems into one. When we see 308 plus or minus 2.4, they're really asking us what is 308 plus 2.4? And what is 308 minus 2.4? 308 plus 2.4 is 310.4. 308 minus 2.4 is 305.6. The big deal here, of course, is that whenever you have plus or minus, it gives us two answers. because it's a way to combine two problems into one. The job of a plus or minus, especially with tolerance, is to help us describe a range. So we'll take a small peek at this portion of a number line. If we had A plus or minus an amount of B, the A would be sitting here in the middle. And we would go from A up B units, and we would also go down that same amount. So if we go B units above A, we get A plus B. If we go B units below A, we land at A minus B. So the center of this range is A, and each of the endpoints is B units away from the center. You've probably spoken plus or minus before. Maybe you said give or take. When Kevin says that we will be there in 45 minutes, give or take five, what he is really saying is 45 plus or minus five minutes. And of course, what this really means is 45 plus 5, which is 50, and 45 minus 5, which is 40. So what he's really doing is talking about a travel time that's between 40 and 50 minutes. All right, next page. Let's see how well we understand this idea. The volume of a standard mobile home is between 6,370 cubic feet and 7,350 cubic feet. We would like to express this range using plus or minus. So the first thing we want to do is maybe get a visual on this. Let's try drawing a number line. Over here is 6,370 feet, and on the right-hand side we have 7,350 feet. And our job is to find this middle. The first thing we might do is check out the difference. How far is it between the two ends? Seven thousand three hundred fifty minus 6,370. Hmm. 7,350 on my calculator minus 6,370. 980 cubic feet.
that's the entire distance from the low value up to the high value. And of course, to find the middle point, we need half of that. So we'll divide that by 2. And see that that distance is 490. So back here on our number line, there's 490 units from the bottom to the middle, and another 490 units from the middle to the top. Of course, the question is, where's the middle? But now we can clearly see that if we want to find the center, all we have to do is take the low value of 6,300, whoops, 70, and add on the 490, that half distance. There we go, 6,860. That's the value that belongs in the middle of this picture. So the volume of a standard mobile home for heating or air conditioning purposes is 6,860 cubic feet, give or take, plus or minus, 490 cubic feet. The thing about measured quantities is that they are never exact. You can count a precise number of pets, of children, of grains of sand, but you can't determine exactly how much gas you put in your car. The machine might tell you that you put in five gallons, but you didn't put in exactly five gallons. And when I say exactly, I'm talking about five gallons, 5.0000000, on and on and on, zeros, gallons. Nobody can measure that many decimal places, not even if you were working with a laser. So all measured quantities have to be estimated. Depending upon the tools we use, some estimates are more precise than others. When you go to the grocery store and purchase 3.7 pounds of hamburger, you know you're not getting exactly 3.7 pounds of hamburger. The question is, how much hamburger are you getting? All right, so let's check this out. Let's put 3.7 here in the middle. And to the nearest tenth, we'd have 3.8, and we would have 3.6. What sorts of values would be reported as 3.7 pounds? Like this one right here would. That'd be maybe 3.71 pounds, or maybe 3.713 pounds, or 3.73 pounds. All of those values would round to 3.7 if we were rounding to the nearest tenth. Over here, maybe 3.68 pounds would round up to 3.7, or 3.66 pounds would round to 3.7. Where does the rounding stop? Well, the lowest value that rounds to 3.7 is over here at 3.65 pounds. Right? This weight would round up to 3.7 if we were rounding to the nearest tenth. All of these weights Ah, let me try it this way. All of these weights here that I'm shading in will round to 3.7 pounds. And so will these weights that are just a little bit above 3.7. Where does the rounding stop? Well, as soon as we get halfway between 3.7 and 3.8, we're at 3.75. 3.75 rounds up to 3.8, and so does everything to the right of it. So the rounding stops just below 3.75 pounds. 
So when you buy 3.7 pounds of hamburger, what you're really getting is 3.7 pounds plus or minus something. Plus or minus how much? Well, plus or minus this much. Both of these red distances, whoops, are 0 0.05 units apart. So your 3.7 pound glob of hamburger is really 3.7 pounds plus or minus 0 0.05 pounds. Greatest possible error describes the furthest that the reported value could be away from the actual value. So in our picture up here, the furthest away we could be is this 0 0.05. We could be right here on the very, very edge or way down here on the very, very edge. So for this hamburger, the greatest possible error is 0 0.05 pounds. It's the amount that you add or subtract from the center value. It's the plus or minus part. All right. Let's try one here. A survey asks dog owners to report the weight of their dogs to the nearest five pounds. What is the greatest possible error associated with the reported weight? Well, just because this is new to us, let's start off by looking at a number line again. Besides that, we don't know what the weight of the dog is. So let's just see what the possibilities are. Maybe the dog weighs 40 pounds, maybe the dog weighs 45 pounds, or 50 pounds, or 55 pounds. If your dog weighs 53 pounds, you can't put that down. The survey wants to the nearest five pounds. All right, so what sort of thing could we do? Let's look at all of the values that might be reported as 50 pounds. We would go from here, halfway between 45 and 50, to here, halfway between 50 and 55. So we're looking for all of these values. Halfway between 45 and 50 is 47 and a half. Halfway between 50 and 55 is 52 and a half. The greatest possible error Let's see, I should have made this larger. Ah, hold on. There, that's a little better. The greatest possible error is the distance from that center value, the one that we rounded to, to the edge of the interval. And each of these is worth two and a half. So the greatest possible error for this particular reporting is two and a half pounds. The worst case scenario is that your dog weighs 47 and a half pounds and you tell the survey people that the dog weighs 50 pounds. That would be the biggest amount of misrepresentation, so to speak, and that amount would be two and a half pounds. All right. So I saved this on the next page just so that you wouldn't see it right away and wouldn't give away the answer to the last one. But whenever we're rounding, the greatest possible error is always half of the measuring unit. So let's come back to the page before again. Here with the dogs, the measuring unit was five pounds. The greatest possible error was half of that, two and a half pounds. Here with the hamburger, the measuring unit was one tenth of a pound because this value was given to us to the nearest tenth. So the greatest possible error was half of that, five one-hundredths. Okay, so the greatest possible error is always half of the measuring unit whenever we're rounding. When we're not rounding, the greatest possible error is still that plus or minus amount. Even if two parts come from the same assembly line, their dimensions will always be a little bit different from each other. 
when you look at a blueprint or specifications in a manual, different sizes are written down, but they all come with something called tolerance attached or mentioned somewhere on the page or in the manual. Tolerance describes the greatest possible error that your measured quantity can have. And depending upon your situation, you're allowed to be off by a little bit or a lot. If you have a very small tolerance, it means that the whatever it is that you're using, the piece that you're using has to have a very precise length. The amount that you're using has to have a very precise weight. Being off by more than just a little bit is going to ruin everything. Some things are sensitive, some things are not. So as a picture, we have this perfect measurement, the perfect unattainable measurement, but we also have an acceptable range. The distance between the perfect measurement and the upper limit is called the tolerance. It's exactly the same as the distance between the perfect measurement and the lower limit. So this distance right here and this distance right here both represent the tolerance. It's that greatest possible error. It's that plus or minus amount. The upper and lower limits are often referred to as the limit dimensions. But the idea is exactly the same as what we were doing before. So here in example five, we have a bimetal strip inside of a thermal control. And this bimetal strip is really thin. It's supposed to be between 0.995 millimeters and 1.005 millimeters thick. Our job is to find the tolerance and to write this thickness range using the plus or minus. This is a good place for you to stop the recording and try this one on your own. When you get done, come back and we'll see how well you did. Okay, whenever I do a problem like this, I like to get my number line going. Now put the high value and the low value in place. And make a spot for my center value. The distance between the high and the low, that difference, we'll take the high, subtract off the low, maybe use my calculator if I need to. And we see that the distance between these is 0 0.01. Half of that distance gets me to the middle. So I'm going to divide this value by 2. And I know I need 0 0.05, sorry, 0 0.005 to get to the middle. And another 0 0.005 to get from the middle to the top. If I take the low value, add half of that distance, I will find the middle. One. One millimeter. So my tolerance is that plus or minus amount. 0 0.005 and these are millimeters. The thickness of the bimetal strip needs to be one millimeter. But we know that no thickness will ever be exactly one millimeter. So we allow ourselves this little bit of leeway because this is a very sensitive type of thing inside of that thermostat control. And that little bit of leeway is five thousandths of a millimeter. Let's try another here expand our thinking to talk about the temperature differential. So differential and difference pretty much mean the same thing. With a temperature differential, all we're doing is subtracting the high temperature minus the low temperature.
let's look at a climate controlled storage facility keeps fur coats in a room where the temperature is constantly 39 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, well, no room is ever constantly at a specific temperature. This particular room, 39 and a half degrees Fahrenheit plus or minus five and a half degrees Fahrenheit. Our job is to find the temperature differential and the temperature limits. See what you can do. Pause the recording, come back when you're done. The first thing I want to do is evaluate this plus or minus statement. 39.5 plus 5.5 and, and 39.5 minus 5.5. Do a little bit of calculating. Find out that we have 45 degrees for the high temperature and 34 degrees for the low temperature. So this temperature ranges from 45 degrees Fahrenheit to 34 degrees Fahrenheit. The temperature differential is just the high temperature minus the low temperature. So all we have to do is subtract these. And that's 11 degrees Fahrenheit. Even if we didn't have the high and the low calculated, we could have figured out the temperature differential. Remember this five and a half, that's the amount that we're adding or subtracting. Our picture looks like this, where we go up five and a half degrees from the bottom to get to the middle, and up another five and a half degrees from the middle to get to the top. Total distance, five and a half plus five and a half, is 11. Okay, let's slide up here a little bit more. When we talk about refrigeration, the temperature controls are used to cycle the compressor on or off. Sometimes it's a pressure control that does this. Either way, we have a cut in point, which is the setting that turns the compressor on. this begins the cooling process. So the cut-in point is associated with the higher temperature or the higher pressure. The cut-out point is exactly what you think it is now. It's the setting that turns the compressor off. The setting is associated with the coldest temperature or the lower pressure. So when we talk about the differential here, that's still just the difference. The distance between these two, we would have the cut in minus the cut out. Whether that be a temperature setting or a pressure setting doesn't matter. It works the same way. All right, so one last example here before we go. There, keep our picture in view. The cutout temperature on the temperature control is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. The average temperature is 17 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. We need the temperature differential and the cut-in temperature. And while we're at it, let's express the temperature range using that plus or minus notation. I'm just going to make a copy of that picture that we had up there. What do we know? The cutout temperature is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. That's down here, the low point at which the compressor turns off. The average temperature is 17 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. That's our middle. And the distance between these two is seven and a half. This distance is the same from the middle to the top. So we have another seven and a half degrees. So let's see, 17.5 plus another seven and a half degrees, that's 25. So up here, this top value is 25 degrees Fahrenheit. And now I think we have everything that we need. 
the differential. We can see from our diagram is seven and a half plus seven and a half, or if you like, two times seven and a half. Doesn't matter, either way, we end up with 15 degrees Fahrenheit. The cut in temperature is 25 degrees. That's the number on the top of our diagram. And finally, we can talk about this temperature range as being 17 and a half degrees Fahrenheit. That's our middle value, plus or minus that tolerance, that greatest amount of error of seven and a half degrees. Okay, and that's it. We'll be talking. Take care. Bye-bye.